डियर स्टूडेंट्स इस वीडियो में आपको मल्टीवेरिएट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशंस के बारे में बताऊंगा हम प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन बोथ इन डिस्क्रीट केस एंड कंटिन्यूस केस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन बोथ इन डिस्क्रीट एंड कंटिन्यूस ऑलरेडी कवर कर चुके हैं मल्टीवेरिएट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन का मतलब ये है कि अब जो हमारे रैंडम वेरिएबल्स हैं इनकी तादाद बढ़ जाएगी रैंडम वेरिएबल्स दो हो सकते हैं या दो से ज्यादा हो सकते हैं वी विल गो टू फाइनाइट नंबर ऑफ रैंडम वेरिएबल्स तो अब हम करेंगे ये कि हम एक ही सैंपल स्पेस लेंगे उस एक सैंपल स्पेस पे हम ज्यादा रैंडम वेरिएबल इंट्रोड्यूस करेंगे फॉर एग्जांपल अगर मैं सैंपल स्पेस लेता हूँ मैं एक डाइस को दो दफा थ्रो करता हूँ दो दफा रोल करता हूँ और उसके सैंपल स्पेस में ऑब्वियसली थर्टी सिक्स एलिमेंट्स आ जाएंगे एक रैंडम वेरिएबल में डिफाइन करता हूँ इस तरह का सम ऑफ नंबर ऑफ डॉट्स दूसरा रैंडम वेरिएबल डिफाइन करता हूँ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ नंबर ऑफ डॉट्स तो ऑब्वियसली वी विल हैव डिफरेंट आंसर्स वी हैव टू डिफरेंट रैंडम वेरिएबल्स अब इसी कॉन्टेक्स्ट में जब दो रैंडम वेरिएबल ले लेंगे तो फिर दो रैंडम वेरिएबल तक तो रहेगा बाई वन बाई वेरियड केस पेयर ऑफ रैंडम वेरिएबल्स के साथ चल रहे हैं हम इनको एक्स और वाई लिखेंगे कैपिटल एक्स कैपिटल वाई और जो इनकी वैल्यूज हैं उनको स्मॉल एक्स स्मॉल वाई लिख लेंगे फिर इस तरह से जब हम मल्टी वेरिएट केस डिस्कस करेंगे तो ये बाई वेरिएट को फिर हम जनरलाइज कर लेंगे और इस केस में x1, x2 वन एक्स टू एन सो ऑन एक्स एन ये फाइनाइट रैंडम वेरिएबल्स लेंगे एक एग्जाम्पल लेते हैं उस एग्जाम्पल से आपको ये एक्सप्लेन करने की कोशिश करूंगा कि जो ज्वाइंट प्रॉपिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है ये किस तरह से हम इसको यूज कर सकते हैं और फिर इस एग्जाम्पल की मदद से एक फार्मूला डेवलप करेंगे और फिर वो फार्मूला डेवलप करके नोट ये करेंगे कि ये जो ज्वाइंट प्रॉबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है ये भी प्रॉबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वाली प्रॉपर्टीज पूरी करती है तो ये एग्जाम्पल करते हैं अब टू कैपलेट्स आर सेलेक्टेड एट रैंडम फ्रॉम अ बॉटल कंटेनिंग थ्री एस्प्रीन टू सीडेटिव एंड फोर लेग्जेटिव कैपलेट्स वी हैव टू टेक टू कैपलेट्स and we have in all these three aspirin two sedative and four laxative caplets so that means total nine caplets so a bottle has nine caplets and we have to draw at random only two of them now the num uh, what we do is if we declare x and y are respectively the number of aspirin and sedative caplets included among the two caplets so the two caplets which you uh, which you select X represents the number of aspirin and the Y represents the number of sedative caplets included among the two caplets drawn from the bottle. Now what we do? We need to find the probabilities associated with all possible pair of values of X and Y. So what we need to do is we need to find the probabilities associated with those pairs. So when we do that, we have again X the number of uh, aspirin caplets. And now, please note, uh, there are three aspirin, three aspirin caplets. But uh, since we have to choose only two, so we can choose maximum two aspirin caplets. So this is zero, one, and two. And I have in, uh, intentionally removed these three. Why the number of sedative caplets? They are. We can. We may choose none of the uh, sedative caplets. We may choose one, or we may choose two. So this y is zero one two. Now what are the possibilities? We have to choose two caplets. So for example, in this pair, we do what? We choose none of the aspirin, none of the sedative caplets, and we choose two out of these four laxative caplets. And then we choose this. We choose none of the aspirin, one from the sedatives, and obviously the remaining one one will be coming from the laxative caplets. And then this zero two non aspirin and two sedative caplets one zero so one aspirin non sedative and the remaining one will be coming from the laxative where one aspirin and one lex, uh, sedative and in this case two aspirin and none of the sedatives and obviously then none of the laxative so please keep in mind that we have to uh, uh, choose at random only two caplets okay. So these are the possible pairs which we can have. Now the total caplets are nine, and in how many ways we can pick those those two caplets? So that means I'll be having nine C two choices to make. So that means my sample space will have thirty six elements. So I I have thirty six 
possible choices of picking only two, picking two caplets out of nine. Okay, now again I rewrite those pairs. These are the possible choices. And uh, actually I am trying to count out the number of pairs of selection. So in how many ways can I pick this pair? Now please note that when we choose uh, this pair, and we let's suppose we have this situation where we have not picked any aspirin, neither we have picked the sedatum, and what we have done, the char lexative thing we have picked two out of them. So what is the possibility? We three C zero. We have not picked any uh, aspirin tablet. Two C zero. We have not picked any sedative. And we have picked two from the lexative. So by using the rule of product, we obtain. So we will have one from here, we will have one from here, and we have six from here. So this is one times one times six. So we obtain six. In this case, zero one. So this zero indicates that none of the aspirin. One from sedative, so three aspirin, I have picked none. Two sedative, I have picked one. Four lexative, I have picked one. But so there are these are these many possible ways. For example, one from here, two from here, and four from here. Uh, two from here. So this is two C one, and I think I have made a mistake. So this is eight. Okay, then 0C2, uh, out of the aspirin I pick none, out of the sedatives I pick both and out of the dexative I pick none. So in this case this is 1, this is again 1 and this is again 1, so I have, I, I, there is only one way I can choose this pair. And in how many ways I can choose this pair? So this first aspirin, out of 3 I can choose only 1. Out of the two uh, sedatives, I pick none, and out of four lexatives, I pick one. So three from here, one from here, and four from here. So this will be three multiplied by four, okay, that gives me 12. And then one C1, how, in how many ways I can choose this pair? One, one from three aspirin tablets, I pick one. From two sedatives, I pick one. From laxatives, I pick none. So three from here, two from here, three way, three. In, this can be done in three ways. This can be done in two ways. So in all, I can come, uh, pick this pair in six ways. Two C zero, uh, two comma zero. So these aspirins, I pick both aspirins, and in that can be picked in three C two ways. Uh, I have not picked any sedatives in here, so two C zero, and out of the laxatives, none. So this becomes 3C2, which is actually 3, so up to 3. Now, what do you do? This side is the same as the x label. These are possible values of x. These are possible values for y. Now, I need to look for the probability of uh, selecting this pair. In how many ways? What is the probability that I'll pick this pair? So that will be 6 divided by 36. 36 is coming from the size of the sample space. So I pick 1 over 6 over here. And over here I have 8 over 36. So this is 0, 1. So this 0 on this side and 1 on this side. So this is 8 over 36. So this is representing my second uh, second entry, which is y. So this is 8 over 36. And then 0, 2, this is 1 over 36. That is already written 1 over 36. And then when I look at 1, 0, so this is my 1 at 0, 1 by 3. And how it is coming? So this is 12 ways of choosing this 1, 0. So this becomes 12 over 36. And that becomes 1 by 3. And the six ways of choosing this pair, 1, 1, and that becomes again 6 by 36, and that becomes 1 by 6. So this is there. And if we look at 2, 0, and when we look at 2, 0, so this is 2, 0, and this is 3 by 36, and that's 1 by 12. That's 1 by 12. And uh, what happens over here? What happens over here? What happens over here? So these are not the events being considered in this scenario, they are the impossible events. We don't write them and even if we want to write them, we can put zeros over here. Okay.
Now, after looking at all this computation, I am interested in finding out the formula for this probability, joint probability distribution. When we will be saying joint, that means we have more than one random variables. So, by looking at all these, in sub ki ye jo probability distributions ka ye table humne end pe construct kar diya we will be trying to isko dekhke hum ye f of xy wala formula dekhe and when we go about that so please look at this first entry so this is 3 this 3 represents the number of aspirin available how many of them i choose x and what are possible values for x 0 1 and 2 so i can use x as 0 1 or 2 and then mind you we have to keep the total 2 so from the second one 2 see y again y has 0 1 2 these possibilities so 2 c y and then 4 please note that in this row the sum remains 2 always the sum remains 2 always the sum remains 2 always so what we have done is we are interested in number of aspirins and we are interested in number of sedatives and we are not interested in laxatives but this whole thing has to stay to so this 4 combination 2 minus x minus y and this whole thing divided by 9 combination 2 so this gives me the formula for the joint, distrib joint probability distribution so in such scenarios we need this multivariate distribution we need bivariate in, in this case this is a bivariate distribution and uh, when we have more than one random variable we start using the term joint probability distribution and if x and y are random variables this is how we write it f of x y is that probability of this random variable probability that this random variable x will assume the value x and this random variable y will assume the value of y and again since this is a probability function, its value must be greater than or equal to 0. It has to be non-negative. And then, and it has to be non-negative for each pair within its domain. And then when we sum over the random variables, the sum has to be 1. And uh, this is another example. So in this case, we constructed this um, mathematical expression. But if we take this one, f of xy is xy over 36. And if x can assume values 1, 2, 3, y can assume values 1, 2, 3. So, ek cheez am note kar sakte that this is greater than 0. Because x is greater than or equal to 1. Uh, y is greater than or equal to 1. So, this whole thing will be greater than 0. And you can verify that when we sum them up, we obtain the answer 1. So, uh, we have introduced uh, this uh, joint probability distribution for two variables. And what we do is obviously the natural thing is that this will come to probability function. Now, if you do this, I have introduced you to introduce the discrete random variable. Obviously, this will come to the continuous random variable. If you have a discrete random variable, then summation is used. Now, as you can see, the continuous random variable will be jumping into the integrals. So, this is the जो पहले हम वन वेरिएबल के लिए जो कुछ कर चुके हैं यहां पे हम उसको रिपीट करेंगे तो इस वीडियो में इतना ही तो फिर आगे इस वीडियो के बाद जो फर्दर बाकी की जो मार्जिनल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वगैरह उनका मुकम्मल करते रहेंगे